Hey, it's Kevin Topol with JK on the Run, and a few of you have asked about the 2 gig RAM upgrade I'm about to perform on Samwise, the Samsung Q1 Ultra Premium. So I thought real quick I'd go through that with you. Obviously, you're going to need a Samsung Q1 Ultra or Ultra Premium. You'll need, oh, a small screwdriver or two. I have a set of small screwdrivers that I got from a dollar store. Can't remember how much they cost, though. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. We also have the 2 gigabyte upgrade module that I just got today. So you're going to need those few items. And you'll certainly want to be on a surface that does not conduct static electricity. You want to be, uh, like right now I'm not on a carpeted area like my office is because of the static. I'm down here in my kitchen where there's uh, very little static electricity generated. And also I've got some metal around me that I've touched a couple times just to discharge any uh, remaining energy that I may have. And uh, that's always good to do. So, let's get started. Things first. You'll want to remove your battery from your device which requires you to press the battery latch and then take the battery out. There's a reason you want to do that. Let me see if I can zoom in on those reasons and let's see we're over here. You've got screws that you'll need to remove uh, down here, over here, here, and here, and here those five, plus there are two additional that are here and here. So let me zoom back out and we can just cover that again real quick. So there's a total of seven screws. Let's put this back down. And those seven screws are at the four corners, here and here, here and here, and then one, two, three screws. Now these two are labeled L4. I believe those are shorter screws. We'll find out when we take them out. But at this point, now that I'm not plugged in, I have no battery, no power, I can undo the screws. So let me get my one dollar Phillips head and remove the ones from the four corners. Hmm doesn't like that screwdriver. I don't want to strip it. Ah, that feels much better. And the way you use these, notice how I'm pushing down. You push down with force and then the, the barrel actually moves. That way you have enough force to push down on the screw. And you don't have to worry about stripping it or anything like that. Let's do this corner. We've got one corner done. Oh, I need to eat my Wheaties. Ah, there we go. Whew. Okay, that's corner number, whoops, corner number two. I'm just placing these over to the side so they're out of the way. Let's do corner number three. This one is actually embedded in there pretty good. Ah, there we go. Wow, I need to eat more vegetables or they need to stop putting so much torque into these babies. That's four, all four are the same size so far. I'll do the corner closest to me. I'd like to meet the person who put these in. Probably have 20 inch biceps. All right, there's four screws out. That leaves one, two, let's get this back over here. One, two, three. Let's do the one here on the side. Okay, that's good. You really wanna be careful that you don't strip these screws again. Now, these I believe are the shorter ones. They're labeled L4, top and bottom right here underneath the battery housing. Let's see if I am right. Oh, yep, because it didn't take too many turns. It's not quite undone just yet. That with you, okay. And here, I don't know if you'll be able to see the difference. Let me zoom in a little bit. Move this over. You can hopefully see that these screws are, this is the standard longer one, and then this is the L4 screw, which is about, I'd say about half, half the length. So we'll put those back. That's six out of seven. Zoom back out here. 
And finally the last L4, which is nearest me. And then it gets really fun. Because you actually have to take this apart. And you'll probably hear some sounds you don't want to hear. But such is life. If you want to get your RAM upgraded, there we go. Okay, so now I have seven screws out all right here. And you'd think, hey, it just comes apart. Oh no, 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 it does not. Nor did the prior um, units, to be quite honest. What I always do is I take off or open any of the flaps or housings just to make sure that nothing is hidden there, showing a way to connect. And actually, it looks like there is. Let's see if we can do a little zoom, a little zoom action here. Underneath the cover for the VGA, second USB and Ethernet is a little clip. Let's see, Wait, there we go. There's a clip right there that's holding it, holding the two pieces of the device together. So I'm gonna get a small flathead and pop that. Mm -hmm. Not the easiest thing in the world, but uh, there we go. You can see, hopefully, that there's a little bit of separation now in the case. Specifically, let me see if I can, right here, this used to be flush, this seam, but now it's cracked open just a little bit. So that's one of the pressure clips. I had a little to spare you the agony of watching me struggle trying to get the case open. It actually was not as easy as I would have hoped. And it's mostly done now, and I actually had to work my way around the device and all its faces. I attempted to squeeze, push, pull, and everything every which way, but it was not as easy as one would have hoped. Nonetheless, we're now at a point where we can carefully, ever so carefully, take the back piece off. like one of the clips might still be attached somewhere, somehow. It's just not... Ah, there we go. Yeah, it seems like there's a little bit of trial and error. Uh, you have to... What I would say is you have to be very careful. You don't want to break any of the clips. And now that I have it open, I might be able to see some of those clips. I see a clip... here... And the two device, the two pieces, there's a clip here, maybe difficult to see. That's on the bottom back right here. There's one on the top, so that would equate to top over here. So it looks like right here, let me flip this back over, right here on the back side, in between are two pressure clips. So that's in addition to the one that we removed near the VGA over here. All right, so let's get to the good stuff. The RAM. The RAM is actually going to be underneath this other motherboard, so we're going to have to take this off as well. Well, this is certainly not as easy as the prior Q1 series, nor as the Q1 Ultra, if I recall correctly, because if you notice, there is no RAM module here. You've got your hard drive, you've got the CPU under here, fan here. So there's actually, and I've already taken out some of the screws and also removed some wires out of the way just by taking them out from underneath the tape. You'll also see I've removed the front-facing camera. I'm sorry, the rear-facing camera. Right here with one screw. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Here's the camera, sen camera sensor right here in my hand. And I've, again, removed some of these red wires. I had to actually take them, the red and the white, out of, let me back up again, out of the interface right here. There was a set of wires that went in through this connector. So, having done all that, oh, let's get this. 
small motherboard flipped over very carefully. And look what we have revealed. Here's where the RAM module hides. So, here you can see the innards if you like. Let's get that more into the frame. Okay, so now that I've got everything there, and while we're here, we can also talk about, we said the RAM is right here. We've got the um, PCI Express card here, which is the Atheros Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And let's see what we're going to do. All right, let's replace the RAM. Let's get that over with. In fact, let me open up the RAM module that I have. So we can see that. And this is a 200 pin SODIMM 2 gigabyte RAM module. The one I purchased is from Kingston. For what that's worth, I've used Crucial in the past, that's not a problem. And let's see, this is going to be kind of tricky to zoom in and do, but I'm going to try and do it anyway. Let's zoom in to where the RAM is. Okay, you can see upside down, you can see the RAM module here. This is what comes with the Samsung Q1. Ultra Premium, and there's a silver clip here, there's a silver clip here. We just undo one and two, and look at that. The RAM, you should be able to see, has lifted up. Now it's simply a matter of, let me back this up so you can kind of see, simply a matter of pulling out this RAM. Done. There's the RAM and then taking the replacement memory module putting it right in here at an angle, about a 45 degree angle like so push it in and then push it down and the clips will reattach automatically and there you go, that's the RAM switch that's the easiest part of this entire process, I had no idea that the RAM module would be underneath the one of the motherboards in here so, now it's a matter of flipping everything back, putting all the wires back into their respective interfaces, putting the camera piece back where it belongs. Let's get those wires out of the way. And putting the screws back that I took out on the corners to remove this module. I also removed the ones from the hard drive because I was unsure if I needed to. I don't think I needed to do that. So you should not have to remove the screw here and this screw here. In any case, that is that, and I'm going to put this guy back together. Okay, at this point I've got everything back together. The screws are all in place, the various points, and the camera. It's a little tricky to get in there because there's a, a little bit of a, a tooth, I guess I'd call it, that goes right inside. It gets put inside underneath this piece of board here. So it goes in like that and that keeps it secure. And then the silver screw, that was the only silver screw I removed, goes back here for the camera. So now it should just be a matter of firing everything up. Once we put the case back on, and I'm going to go in the opposite direction that I was able to take the case off. Here's where we will hear some pops and clicks as those pressure clips grab hold again. Actually, let's do it from the top down because there's some interfaces there that I don't want to mess with. And I'm just working my way around the device. Clips get catch again. Everything pretty much lines up very nicely. You don't have to worry about being off because of the way they have de designed this device. We're kind of caught over the top again. There we go. At this point, there are very few gaps. Let me open this up. That's caught there. 
and everything looks to be solidly put back together. So now, before I even put the screws back that we took out, the ones here in the corners and the L4s here and here, I'm going to put the battery back in because there's no point in doing those screws if something isn't quite right. We've got our five LEDs and I'm going to fire up the Q1. Now I have not gone into the BIOS. There may be something I need to do in the BIOS that will require me to for setup for network boot. It's just asking here. Actually, let's go into setup. It looks like it realizes something has changed and I am in the BIOS. This is going to be hard to see because the screen is so glossy. So I'm going to just make sure. It does recognize two gig of memory now. And let's exit saving changes. Continue. And make sure she boots up all right. Kind of hard with the gloss and the glare. Let's see what I can do about that. Okay, I've spared you the boot up process just to save on a little time. And let's go into the control panel. And we'll go to, I'm kind of upside down, so bear with me here. Oh, performance maintenance, I don't know. That's not what I wanted. System, that's what I wanted. And we've got on here, and let's see if we can zoom in. 1.99 giga RAM. Okay, I was ripped off. I should have two. No, it's, that's pretty normal for Windows to report it as 1.99 gig of RAM. So, in any case, that, my friends, is the, wow, not so simple way to upgrade the RAM on the Samsung Q1 Ultra. I thought it would be a little bit easier than that, but I did not realize it would be hiding. And, uh, well, such is life. This is what we do when we want to boost our performance. And everything, Wi-Fi radio is working just fine, and it's looking pretty good. So there we go. Have at it, my friends. Enjoy your two gig RAM upgrades if you're going to do that on your Samsung Q1 Ultra Premium. I, for one, cannot wait to get Vista on here just to see what it does with that 1.33 gigahertz core solo and now the two gig of RAM. Sweet!